Off-road safari style builds have gained popularity over the years, not only as a way to drive a comfortable daily driver and go get your groceries in comfort, but also take a trail to go hiking or camping and enjoy the outdoors. We're here in Zion National Park with Subaru, the manufacturer who arguably started that entire craze to test the Crosstrek wilderness. This is on Motorsports. My name is Tyler. Let's go explore. So before we head out for some driving impressions, both on-road, off-road, and some overlanding style type of driving, I wanted to go over the basics of this Crosstrek Wilderness. It is very closely related to the other Wilderness models that we have driven, and it's also the top of the line Crosstrek now, so this sits above the Limited. This has all of the same features that the Limited has, plus a few off-road ready uh, changes. So first things first, as you can see, it has these Yokohama Geolander all-terrain tires, and these mixed with a different heavy-duty spring gives this car another 0.6 inches of ground clearance. It also has a slightly different front and rear bumpers that give it a better approach and departure angles along with that difference in ground clearance. Moving back onto the front slash underneath, they've added a front skid plate, which you'll be able to see under there to help protect the radiator and a couple more things below the engine. It's not a crazy heavy duty skid plate, uh, but it is something and it does make a big difference, especially because I can tell you from experience, which you'll see a little bit later, that that front bumper is the first thing to hit when you're in um, a little bit steeper of an incline situation. Keeping with under the paint and some of the hardware differences with this car, they added a couple different things to the transmission to deal with the heat and the the slippage of transmission along the trails for this. So it now has two sensors in the transmission and those, the standard car only has one. And those sensors basically are to ensure that this CVT stays in the proper gear more efficiently and it gets into that proper gear more quickly. So extra sensors mean quicker reaction time for the transmission. They've also added extra transmission coolers, which have increased the towing capacity on this by 2,000 pounds. So standard limited towing capacity is 1,500 pounds. The Crosstrek Wilderness has a 3,500 pound towing capacity. Along with the increased towing capacity, we also have extra roof racks or more heavy duty roof racks up at the top. So this increases the capacity of uh, amount of things that you can have on the roof from 150 pounds, I believe, all the way up to 700 pounds. So that means you can take this thing camping, put a tent on top and actually sleep in it yourself and not have to worry about exceeding any weight limit. So all of that is wrapped around the standard 2.5 liter boxer four cylinder making 182 horsepower and the CVT, which like I said, is mostly unchanged except for some transmission coolers and um, actually a different final drive ratio. So let's get it out on the road, get it out on the trails, and see how it drives. Alright, so starting off a little bit of off-road driving, we just got off the street on the uh, Crosstrek Wilderness, and street impressions are for the most part unchanged from a regular Crosstrek, which is not a bad thing. It still really behaves on the street. You don't really feel the fact that you are on all terrains. Hi Sofian. Uh, you don't really feel the fact that you're on all trains. Normally all trains feel a little bit wallowy on the street and they kind of are a little bit louder. Um, that's not really the case here. It still has really good street manners. But when you get it onto an off-road trail like we're on now, especially these like washboardy kind of high-speed off-road fire roads, the faster you go, the smoother this gets. For some reason, every Subaru wilderness vehicle that we test, as well as like some of the WRXs that I've been in, on track and on autocross, when you get them on a bumpier road and in a high speed environment, they kind of just smooth out. Something about the damping that the Subaru engineers do um, really just lends itself to that rally inspired heritage that they actually have. Um, even the bigger bumps like that dip that we just went through, they're very well damped. They, it's one and done motion. There's even a little bit of opposite lock going through, um, which brings me to Another thing that I noticed under braking, there's either an incredibly biased front brake system here or they do something with the rear that allows some sort of rotation in, in this chassis. I wasn't even expecting it to rotate back there when we went through that corner, but it did and it, and it did it well and the traction control reeled me right back in. But there's 
a way more playful nature here than I expected to be the case considering all-wheel drive and, and Subaru's safety features and all of that. Normally Subarus like to understeer, but for some reason when you take this one off-road, maybe it's the wheelbase, the shorter wheelbase makes it a little bit more manic. Um, it likes to rotate and that's not a bad thing. It actually, <laughs> it actually really does like to rotate. So after we're done with this gravel road, uh, we're going to be going to an off-road park where hopefully we have the opportunity to do a little bit more um, severe off-roading that's a little bit different than just this course. Um, but we're about to see how that goes now. All right, so getting on these a little more technical, a little bit more extreme off-roading. Up until this point, we've basically just done on-road and um, like less extreme fire roads and overlanding trials, but now getting a little bit muddy gonna go through a little bit of river and like I said before this really starts to come in its own when you when you go faster um, but it does the tires specifically do a really good job at crawling you through some of these areas like this and I'm gonna go up on a bit of a ledge kind of up a little bit creek waterfall situation and it's really no problem, though, for what it's worth, most things can go through this with no problem. Most things won't be able to go up this no problem, though. It's a little bit of an incline, full lock, going up sideways. I see sky. <laughs> All sky. And I don't know where I'm going because I see sky. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, this is absolutely something that a regular car wouldn't be able to go up, and they told me just to gun it. So we're gunning it. I forgot to close the windows during the gun. Nope. <laughs> yeah, you got. I think you might want to. I didn't gun a, it enough. Or a running start, a little bit more of a running start. So one interesting thing about this X mode all-wheel drive is they tell you just to commit. So. That's floored. Nice. <laughs> All right, so my foot is off the brake right now, which is really disconcerting. But if you could see, I'm putting opposite lock in it. It is absolutely just trailing the rear brake to get us down it. Um, going back up, same deal, committing a little bit. And we are good. So yeah, at, a lot of this is thanks to the tires that they have on this thing. But also, there's no way that a regular cross track could do this if it didn't have the software to lock the differentials the way that this X mode locks it. So it basically is simulating a mechanical differential. But to do that, you have to really commit with the throttle, and that is not something that somebody who normally would off-road with a mechanical differential is used to. So that's why it took me two times to get up that hill. At least that's my excuse. <laughs> so takeaways from the off-road course. You have to commit. Um, kind of like we said in the other wilderness vehicles that we drove, there is good software but a lack of hardware and the tires really help you out with that. And it just is a little bit counterintuitive for you to learn if you come from a more traditional off-roader with a lot of mechanical ability. But this is hill descent control. We are crawling down the hill right now and I don't have my foot on the brake at all. Um, so the electronics and the software are actually really impressive and they make this incredibly easy. Um, and it's a comfortable ride along the way, as comfortable as it can be at least. So after a full day of taking this thing on road, off road, overlanding and seeing the beautiful sights of Zion National Park and all around it in Utah, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you Subaru for having us out. It was an amazing time and I will see you next time. The world gone mad. You're so bad.